Buzzheads, I am Curtis Tucker. I am also That Buzz Guy, and welcome to my podcast and to the YouTube channel here. Just wanted to throw this out there as kind of my pilot episode for That Buzz Guy podcast. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and I know it's crazy out there. I know there's a lot of people unemployed, and there's a lot of folks looking for work, looking for side gigs, trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet with all of the chaos going on. So, uh, I've been talking about doing a podcast for years, a couple of years now, and all I wanted to do was kind of teach everybody to have their own side gig, side hustle, uh, way of making money from working at home and all that. So this is the perfect time. I wish uh, I had started this a year ago and had uh, all of you a year down the road because by now you'd be making some money. Right now it's going to be a little bit hard to just uh, start making money right out the gate, but... If you don't start now, um, you're going to look back, you know, two, three months from now and wish you had. And so hopefully not only will this teach you guys kind of a side gig or a way of making money, but uh, this could change your future. So um, if you are an employed and maybe you weren't super happy with the job you were at or you're not thinking about going back to that job, at least this could give you some options of being able to stay home and work for yourself and make money. You might not make as much money. Uh, maybe you can cut back on some expenses and stuff and, and go ahead and make it. But I tell you what, working at home, working for yourself, is uh, the freedom of that is worth you know making a little bit less working some, for somebody else and being miserable. So um, I've been doing it for almost 20 years now, working for myself at home. Raised two daughters here uh, in my house. <clears throat> Was able to take them to school every morning, pick them up every afternoon. So uh, it's been nothing but a joy. Now over that 20 years, I've done a lot of pivoting. I've done a lot of different things. Um, you know, when I got out of college, I didn't even know how to turn on a computer. That was 1986. And so everything that I've learned, I've learned on my own. There were not computer classes and internet and online and all this stuff in college. So everything that I've learned, I've learned on my own. And I've got to say, if I can do it, any of you guys out there can do it. And so um, through these different podcasts, you know, I'm going to try to take you on a journey of how you guys can work for yourself. If, if maybe all you want to do is have a a blog about how you grow really great tomatoes and you don't really want to make money. You just want to make that a hobby and share, you know, that with people. That's fine. Then there's going to be other people that maybe want to start a, a sports podcast and they're going to want to make, you know, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars a year off advertising and, and merchandise and things like that. So Hopefully I can get, you know, you somewhere in between, you know, both of those. Uh, some people are going to make more money. This is not a podcast or a blog or I'm not a how to make a million dollars type of guy. Um, I can care less about making a million dollars. Uh, when you do make a million dollars, that comes with a lot more problems. Uh, to make a million dollars, you're probably going to have to have a staff and, and a lot more going on than just... Um, just yourself. So, so by definition, um, some people might consider me an entrepreneur. I'm actually more what I consider an indiepreneur, and I want to be an indiepreneur because that keeps me independent. I like working by myself for myself. I have had an, uh, you know, at times I've had one employee before. I have had a downtown office before, um, but right now I'm back to working for myself spending all my time in my home studio off of my garage. So if I were to make a million dollars, we could actually say it all started in his garage. So anyway, I'm going to take you on a journey of what I'm going through, how I make money, how I think you guys can make money, how I think you guys could, um, you know, even, like I said, just fill that gap of maybe wanting to get yourself out there. Um, become So, you know, doing things like blogging and podcasting and video um, can help you become an expert in whatever field you're in. So let's say if you're in real estate and you're making, you know, $75,000 a year, maybe my branding and marketing and advertising can help you jump that up to $125,000. So um, it's also going to be marketing, advertising, branding, tips as well. Um, I don't sell courses. I don't really, I'm not going to be selling you anything, um, you know, that I know of. Uh, eventually, I might try to get you guys to buy some t-shirts or, you know, I might put a PDF together uh, if, if, if we figure out that might be the easier way to get you guys information. But anyway, so this is not about me selling a course or trying to get you guys to sign up for anything. This is just pure me wanting to help you guys be able to do what I've done for 20 years. And that is, have the freedom to work for yourself. My motto is I wake up every day 
and look for a way to make money so I don't have to get a job. Luckily, I've been able to do that for 20 years. And so uh, anything that I know I'm going to share with you guys, I am not a super duper expert in everything. I'm not a big guy on funnels and and masterminds and marketing courses and multi-level marketing. I'm just I'm just all about, you know, just you and your audience. Just you writing a blog and them reading it, you doing a podcast, them listening to it, you you branding yourself, you know, just put yourself out there and that's what I'm going to pretty much talk about. I've also got uh, I've got two daughters. One is a senior in high school, one's a junior in high school because of this COVID-19 crisis that we're going through. They are stuck at home with me. And rather than let them waste the end of the school year, and then we've got all summer, so we're talking about three to four months before they get back in school, I'm not going to let them sit here um, and just their minds rot. And so I'm taking them through how to start their own business. And so, and so part of my episodes will be maybe what they're going through, what I'm going through, what I think you need to go through, and then some side projects that I've got going on. Um, you know, so, so today's episode is, is kind of an introduction. Um, you know, I'll probably do an episode where I give you my complete history. That's not going to be this episode. This episode's more about how have I made money. I've got 22 different ways that I've made money um, over the last 20 years to be able to keep myself working at home and not having to go get a job. So I'm going to go through those today. Um, I have written a blog post at thatbuzzguy.com or curtistucker.com. You can check that out if you'd rather read it. But uh, if you like podcasts, then uh, you're going to enjoy this. I'll go through those, maybe tell you a little bit about where my daughters are with their business. And then, like I say, I'll try to keep this between 45 minutes and an hour uh, weekly. I would really love to be able to do two episodes a week. I know a lot of people are starved for more uh, podcast episodes. If I get the time, uh, if I were making money at this, I would really try to do it twice a week um, until I start making money somehow with advertisers or something. It's probably only going to be once a week. But um, anyway, I'll just try to help you guys out any way I can. Uh, let's, let's use my um, buzz at buzzheadmedia.com email for now. If you guys have questions, thoughts, or ideas, buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. Uh, I'm really more myself on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash Enid Buzz. You're going to hear a lot more about Enid Buzz. That's my main business right now. Uh, but I am also on Instagram under cartoons. I'm on uh, Instagram under Enid Buzz. I'm on Facebook under Enid Buzz and Curtis Tucker, probably that Buzz guy. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on YouTube as Curtis Tucker TV. So, and then I'll, you know, I'll be telling you guys where I'm at, you know, as we go, as we progress on this. So anyway, let me jump into this. Um, again, like I said, if I can do this, anybody can do this. I didn't know anything. I'm not super duper smart. I didn't make super good grades in high school and I wasn't a techie guy in high school. And, and so I, I didn't learn coding in school, but I eventually did learn HTML to be able to build my website. So I basically got into the whole online internet world in 1999. And like I said, I've luckily been able to, uh, I've got my little uh, iPad down here that's got, you know, it's got the blog that I wrote. So i um, just going to give you these 22 different ways that I made money. Um, a lot of them I made money f uh, for the first 10 years, which was about uh, 2000 to 2012 and then from about 2012 until now was kind of a whole different set of of ways because I had to do a major pivot and that could be its own episode on pivoting and why I had to pivot and basically starting from scratch. I, I hear a lot of these entrepreneurs and gurus and stuff and people will ask them, you know, they're, they're millionaires and they'll say, well, you know, what would you do if you lost everything and you had to start over, you know, tomorrow with nothing and and it, it seems real easy for them to say what they would do because they're rich and, and, and they've got all this stuff built up behind them. But I don't know if they had to actually start from scratch, would it really work out for them, you know, without having the jump start that some of them might have had. But um, so that's what happened to me in 2012. I literally pretty much lost all the online businesses that I had and had to start from scratch in 2012 and clawed my way, you know, for about a year until it got going and then I'm back to where I am. So part of uh, maybe one episode or several episodes, I'll tell you guys how 
I did that. So, you know, I've done it. So I've done it twice, you know, started from scratch in, in 2000, built it up and then started pretty much from scratch again in 2012 and, and built it up. So anyway, one of the big deals, the reason this whole thing started that got me online was cartooning. I wanted to be a cartoonist. I was looking for ways of getting single panel cartoons to uh, magazine editors quicker. I thought a website would do that blah, 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 built my first website, got my cartoons on there, didn't sell any, but I'd put some cartoon logos on there. Um, that enabled me to start a cartoon logo business. For, so from 1999 till 2012, um, I did cartoon logos. That was a major part of what I did. And so we're talking like $600 logos, you know, people in Mexico, Japan, Denmark, Canada, everywhere, all over the world would contact me and say, hey, I've got this business and I want a cartoon character or a cartoon as my logo. You know, will you do it? And I'd say, yeah, I'll uh, create a cartoon logo. Look, from Enid, Oklahoma, the thing was, another episode will be SEO, how uh, search engine optimization, how to get your websites ranked real high. A uh, great story, but I got cartoons.com ranked really high for all the cartoon terms. I ranked number one for cartoon logos pretty much for the whole 10 years that I was doing that. So anyway, people would search on Google looking for cartoon logos. I would come up number one. And so they would contact me and I'd say, okay, um, I'll do a cartoon logo for you for $600. Pay me $300 up front. I'll get you the sketches. We'll, you know, narrow it down, finally get your logo. When you like it, pay me the other 300, I'll give you the logo. And then we'd go on our way. And I did, uh, I've never counted, but, uh, you know, I may have, you know, as a single artist, I may have the largest cartoon logo portfolio online, maybe. But I, again, I kind of stopped doing that full time in 2012. So other guys may have caught up and may have more than me by now. But but back in the day, I was pretty much the cartoon logo guy from Enid, Oklahoma. So never think that whatever you want to do, you know, don't say to yourself, well, I could never do this from this town because, yes, you can. If a guy from Enid, Oklahoma town of 50,000 people in the middle of the country can do cartoon logos for people in pretty much every country, well, not country, but continent in the world, um, then you can do whatever you want to do. So so that was uh, my uh, a major way that I made money. Another way was I would draw those cartoons and, and they never got sold, but I had a whole bunch of these leftover single panel cartoons. I would put them on websites. I had them on my computer. And then I sometimes I would draw a cartoon logo for a client and they wouldn't like it. And so I would redraw a completely different one and that's the one they would buy. Or, and then I, or we would start the process and then the people would just disappear. It's strange. A lot of people disappeared. So over time I was ending up with all these cartoon logos and these cartoon cartoons. And then I had cartoon clip art, which I started drawing as well. So I just started building websites and putting these cartoon characters, clip art, and cartoons on, and then I would sell it as royalty-free cartoons. And so like a cartoon character, there might have been a cartoon character that I priced at $49. Well, royalty-free means when you buy that from me, you get to use it for whatever you want. You just you can't copyright it, you can't trademark it. It's royalty-free, meaning I can turn around and sell it to somebody else. And so some of those characters I might have sold you know, dozens and dozens of time each time for $49. So I was making money with that. The uh, clip art was really cheap, you know, maybe $10 I'd, I'd charge for that. And same with the, the cartoons, unless, unless they wanted to use it in like a, a big magazine or something, I might charge, you know, 50 or hundred dollars or something. So anyway, so a large portion of the first 10 years was just cartoon related websites and selling cartoons. Um, but somewhere along the line, um, you know, Google AdSense came along way back at the beginning. So I started throwing Google AdSense on my websites. I was making, you know, a couple dollars here and there and uh, got really addicted to the Google AdSense thing because I knew how to do SEO. So I ended up building 100 really thin content websites for really highly searched for keywords that had the smallest amount of competition built a hundred of those, put Google AdSense on. I was getting about 21,000 unique visits a day. Uh, and so again, this was, you know, years over 10, 15 years ago. So I was getting 21,000 unique visits a day. And that was panning out by the time people clicked on those little ads, that was panning out to around $4,000 on average a month. So I was making about $4,000 a month on Google AdSense. And that was 
uh, pretty much for 10 years. And so again, that all ended in 2012. But so Google AdSense, um, now there's a lot of new products out there and I just haven't tried them yet. I am, so, so from 2012, Till about 2018, I quit everything. I quit doing the cartooning. I quit doing the Google AdSense. I just, you know, I pivoted and I was doing still online, but I was doing something else. And uh, now I'm slowly getting back into that. I still do a couple of cartoon logos every now and then, do cartoon projects. And I just start putting um, Google AdSense back on my my websites. And I've got one website that gets pretty decent traffic, and you know, I'm making about. 230 250 dollars a month just by not really you know in the old days man i would fill those websites up with tons of of google ads this one i'm keeping it pretty pretty thin not very many ads and it's still it's making like i said you know it's extra income and so and then another part maybe i forgot to tell you in the beginning is um you know maybe not a single one of these methods of making money was going to pay for all of my bills and to support a family of four. But when you add all these together, it was a, it, it is, was, is a really great income. You know, there's just maybe a couple here, a hundred here, a couple thousand there, um, you know, $30 there. But when you add it all up, so, so that's, so, and that's what kept me alive, you know, when the crash for me came in 2012 was I, I didn't just have one thing going on. Uh, you know, it crashed AdSense and cartoon logos and, and those websites, but I still had other side gigs going on on top of those. And that's what kept me uh, floating. And then that's what I used to kickstart the next career. So Google AdSense, um, you know, there'll be an episode that I'll do just explaining that and hopefully get you guys on that display ad. So, so what I'm doing now, my main gig now is I started, you know, not even really knowing it, but I started... I, I was looking for a blog. I wanted. To, I was looking for a blog subject. So when you guys, you know, you need to start a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, and so. But what you're going to need is something that you really like to talk about. And a lot of people say something that you're passionate about. Well, you don't really have to be passionate about it. You just have to like to talk about it, or you have to know a lot of information about it. So if you know a lot of information about something, or you just really love talking about something, now. I can't shut up when I start talking about this stuff, branding and marketing and podcasting and uh, making money online. I love talking about it. And that's why I want to do this podcast because, you know, I just love talking about it. So, but I was looking for a subject and I needed to make money pretty quick. Um, so I was looking for a, a subject. What could I blog about that I could probably make some money and have a lot to talk about? So I decided to do a blog about my hometown. So I live in Enid, Oklahoma, a town of about 50,000 people. Luckily, I had started a blog in 2015. Now, it was just part of my 100 websites, and I didn't update it very much. I just put a couple of display ads on it at $10 a piece. It was just part of my 100 websites. I didn't spend any more time with it than I did the other ones, but that's what, um, well, no, 2005, I actually started in 2005. And so in 2013, that was when I pivoted and that's when I kickstarted this, this almost nothing website, you know, hardly any traffic, no ads, really, um, no following, but that's what I took in 2013. 2012, 2013, rebuilt it as a WordPress website, really cranked it up, used Facebook pages, built up an audience. And so I put display ads on the sidebar of that WordPress. It's a magazine themed um, WordPress website. And so my, you know, so I've got advertisers, you know, $600 ads, $500 ads, $250 ads, $100 ads, but I've got ads all over that website. So that's now where I make a lot of my money and it's just basically display advertising so if you guys can get a blog or a website and get it so popular that you've got enough traffic advertisers will pay you to have display ads on there um, Enid Buzz um, so so you may have heard you know in internet marketing um, you know to become the digital mayor of your hometown if you're if you're you know trying to connect with people online well before I'd ever heard of that, I did that. That's what I did. I kind of became the digital mayor um, and really kind of the TV station. My, my um, Again, it's a 50,000 person city with no TV station. And so I literally am kind of the TV station because I, I can do video and live streaming and, 
and all that good stuff. So, so that's what I have become for my I'm just a big news source, online news source uh, for my hometown. And so, uh, I'll get into a little more of how I make money with that. But so, so that's what I'm doing now. Um, that website gets about um, let's say average thirty thousand unique visits a month, and that's about seventy thousand page views a month. So that that gets a lot of eyeballs on on the display ads. Um, another way that I made money, uh, website building. Because I had built those 100 websites for myself, people in town, people that I was doing cartoons for knew that I built websites and so they would ask me to build websites. So um, I would build websites from anywhere from $300 to $1,200. I can tell you guys, if you have no experience in building websites, but you have you know, you think it's something you'd really be interested in, it's not that hard to do. Basically, you go to something like GoDaddy or HostGator, you sign up for a WordPress hosted account. Once you pay your money, they set it up. They, they, so now they pre-install WordPress on it for you. So when you open it up, it's already installed. You don't even have to install it anymore. You go find your really cool theme. Let's say you're an attorney or you're doing a website for an attorney. Go find a attorney theme, put that on the WordPress that you're hosting and just change the pictures and the logo, put in their content and you're done, you know, and charge three to $600 or, you know, if they've got a shopping cart, you, you know, $1,200, uh, you know, some people charge way more than that. But um, again, with just watching some YouTube videos and studying and practicing and building your own website, um, the one thing you're going to hear me say over and over and over and over again is I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're doing. You need a website. Everybody needs their own website. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're a bum and you live, you know, you're homeless in LA. You still need your own website. You never know when it's going to come in handy. You never know when it's going to help you out. Um, you know, if, if all you do at this point is get you a domain name, get that. You can put a website on it later, but everybody needs their own real estate on the world wide web. So anyway, so website building um, could be something you could do. Um, website hosting, you're, you're probably thinking, how could I be a website host? Why would I do that? I'm not even, well, what I, in, what I did um, was I had so many websites, 100 websites, I had to host them somewhere. And so I found out that these places like GoDaddy and HostGator, they had what they called reseller accounts, which means for a certain amount of money, let's say, gosh, in the old days, it was like for $100 a year, you get this much space on our server. Well, in that much space, you could probably put like 50 websites. So what I would do is I would put, you know, a bunch of my websites on there and then put my clients' websites on there. And then I would charge them back in the day. Um, I believe I was charging them $29.99 a month. Well, with like 10 of those websites, not only was I making money, um, but they were paying for my hosting. And so if you'll go to a, a hosting uh, company and uh, set up your own reseller account. That's where you can host your own websites, then start hosting your friends, your family, your boss, host their websites, charge them a monthly fee, at least enough to cover your hosting. So you end up with free hosting, but if you charge a little more, then you end up making money. If you scale that, and you can scale that and do private label or white label hosting, um, you can make a lot of money um, at uh, web hosting. So that's another way that I made money. Uh, graphic design, ever since high school, I started out and uh, I've always liked doing logos and graphic design. So ever since high school, uh, I've never not had a side gig. No matter what job I've had, I've always done logos and graphic design for people on the side. So I continue to do that, tons of logos. Uh, you can, you know, there's pretty good money in graphic design. All it takes is a little bit of creativity, a computer and some software. And, uh, you know, I wasn't super good when I started, especially cartooning. If you saw my very first cartoons, you guys would just die. So, you know, it just, now there are, you know, I can't sing. Even if I practice a whole bunch of singing, I'm never going to be a great singer. Some of you might not ever be a great cartoonist or graphic designer, but you might be able to do enough. You know, you can resize photos or you can crop photos or you can optimize them for websites. That's graphic design or helping people, you know, with their graphic design on websites where you're not really having to be super creative. So um, anyway, something to think about graphic design. Um, I've sold websites now, not really on purpose. You know, when you've got a hundred websites sitting out there and they're all making money with AdSense and stuff, you know, one day a guy, I had a website that I did nothing on the website, but 
put categories for puppy names. So if you had a pug, you'd go to that page and I had all these names that I suggested for naming a pug. Well, I just made that stuff up, people. I just made it up. It was from, it was just my own thoughts. You know, I'd go around and to other websites and collect all the dog names that I could find and I would make names up. And then in my own mind, I would think, well, which names would sound good for a boxer or which names would found, sound good for a chihuahua? I'd put those in those categories. And, and so back in the day with Google AdSense, all these pet ads would pop up and people would click on them. So that website alone, just puppy names, was making $8,000 a year. $8,000 a year and just people clicking on the ad. So one day a guy came along and said, hey, I want to buy your your website. And I was like, wow. And so somewhere I had heard that when you sell a business or a website, you should sell it for twice what you make in a year. Well, I was making $8,000 a year. So I sold it to him for $16,000. Again, it wasn't even for sale. And I was like, I don't care. You know, so um, anyway, so, so, so website flipping is just like flipping anything else, going to a garage sale and getting an item and throwing it on uh, Facebook marketplace. It's just flipping. A lot of people will buy um, websites that are kind of flailing. Uh, even some of them might be doing okay. You just kind of dress them up a little bit. If you know SEO, search engine optimization, you can get them ranked higher and then you can turn around and sell them. So website flipping or website selling is another way of making money. Um, domain names, you know, building all those websites, I have ended up with well over 100 domain names. Uh, when my crash came in 2012, I closed a lot of those websites down, but I kept the domain names. There are places like on GoDaddy and different websites where you can list domain names for sale. You know, on average, they cost somewhere around 10 bucks a year, every year. But, uh, you know, I've sold um, several of my uh, domain names for 100 bucks. So, you know, if you hang on to them for 10 years, you just break even. But, you know, if you can um, sell them quicker, you're going to make a little bit of money. Back in the day, it was a huge thing. People buying and selling dot coms. Um, I would suggest only buying dot coms. The other ones aren't really going to be worth the money. And um, the prices come down and people aren't as interested in dot coms as they used to be. But there still could be some money made there on domain names. Affiliate marketing made tons of money with affiliate marketing. Basically, all affiliate marketing is, and it's a great way to make money, especially if you've got a niche blog, website, or something like that. Um, so what one of the websites that I did in my 100, it was called... Um, um, the classic baby store.com and all I sold was baby furniture. I'd write articles on how to raise kids and blah, 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 all kinds of baby stuff. So I'd go out and I would find stores and websites that sold baby products and they had affiliate programs. I would sign up for the affiliate program and they would supply me with the copy, the photos and the links to their products. And, but when I put that code on my website, it would display the product just like it was on my website. So it looked like I was selling it. Well, when the people clicked on it to buy it, it actually threw them to the other person's website where they would buy it. Well, when they would click on that link, a cookie would go onto their browser. When they made the sale, I would get my percentage of the sale. Um, you know, that could be anywhere from 3% to 15%, depending on the affiliate. So, um, so if you got a lot of traffic and you're sending a lot of people to these different websites, you can make a lot of money with affiliate uh, marketing. Uh, I ranked number one in the world for baby furniture at one time. That's how good I had gotten at SEO. And so I uh, made a lot of money um, with uh, affiliate marketing reviews. Uh, I started a, uh, a website called iPadBum.com and it was when the iPads had first come out and I was talking all about iPads and Apple and techie stuff. And, and I would get companies that would hit me up and say, hey, would you review this product? And so they would send me these products for free I would review them and then I ended up with all these really cool techie products. If I didn't want them, I'd turn around and sell them or I'd give them away as gifts. Um, you know, some people might hit you up and ac actually pay you to do a review of their um, products. They might ask for a link, you know, uh, back to their website or something. But uh, reviews is a great way. And then in a review, you can also insert affiliate links. So let's say you're reviewing a baby bed on your website, you know, that's a review, but there, you know, the word baby bed might be hyperlinked. Somebody clicks on that, it goes to a website that actually sells 
baby beds. If uh, somebody buys one, you make money on that. So that's kind of a combination of using affiliate links and reviews. Um, now that gets to link selling. Now this is something I'm just, I'm telling you things I did. I wouldn't do link selling now. I didn't try to link sell. I mean, I had so many websites and, and great traffic and SEO. I had people coming to me all the time saying, hey, I'll pay you $100 a year, you know, if you'll just throw a link on from this page of your website to this page on my website. And, you know, it was kind of before it was really frowned upon and I was kind of playing in the gray area of uh, Google ranking. And that's why the Google Panda update killed me because of my thin content and some of the things. I wasn't really doing black hat SEO. I was doing some gray hat SEO, which I think, um, you know, I would never, um, you know, put on paid links or even go pay for links now. So I don't recommend anybody do that, but that was uh, a way that I made decent money was people paying me for links to their websites. Naming, um, you know, one time I got into uh, naming, I decided to start a website and let people know that if they wanted a created, creative name for their business, I would come up with one. I can't even remember what I charged. I didn't make a lot of money at that because I didn't spend a lot of time with it. It was just, again, another one of those 100 websites, but um, you could become a naming um, person. You know, um, I've come up with you know, cartoons for my cartoon company, Shaggy Duck for my graphic design company, Chuckleberries for my greeting card company, um, Bottle Caps Mercantile for my t-shirt company. Um, you know, just, uh, I like coming up with fun names. I, I'm not really fond of really boring names. So, um, consulting, I've had people call me and say, hey, will you check out my website? Tell me, um, you know, what's wrong with it? Why am I not ranking? How can I improve my SEO? How can I improve this? They'll pay me money to kind of look at their website. So that's consulting. If you're pretty good at something, uh, and this doesn't all have to be web related. I mean, if you're good at, um, you know, how to fix up a house and get more money at it when it sells, have realtors contact you and consult them on what they need to do to a home to make it sell for more money. And so uh, consulting was a way that I made money, uh, just flat out advertising, especially with Enid Buzz. People come to me and say, hey, will you come to my store? I'm having a grand opening and will you do a live stream? And I'll go do that. That's advertising. It's basically the same as a radio station going to their business and doing a live remote. Um, I promote products um, by doing interviews or just being on air you know, doing videos. And so just flat out advertising for people. My vehicle, I, you know, here was a cool one. Um, I wanted, I, I'd been, hadn't had a car payment for a long time. And so I was like, how can I get a new car and not have to pay for it? And I got this wild idea. Well, what if I get a car and I call it the Buzzmobile and I put Enid Buzz all over the side of it and I get a sponsor to sponsor the Buzzmobile and I put their logo on the side of it, which is advertising. And so I thought, well, what a bet, what better company to go to than a car company? So I went to a local car dealer and I said, Hey, you know, for a year, I'll trade you a year's worth of advertising for a car. So they got me a brand new Equinox, Chevy Equinox. We put, you know, Enid Buzz all over the side of it and all kinds of decals and it became the Buzzmobile and it had their logo on there. And that was a two year deal. It, it turned out to, to last for two years. So basically I didn't have a car payment on a brand new Equinox for two years. So advertising is a great way of making money. Uh, micro influencing, uh, if you got a big following on Facebook or Instagram, YouTube, while you're talking, uh, like right now I'm wearing this t-shirt. Um, a lot of people will send me t-shirts and shirts and I'll wear them on the Enid Buzz Instagram account and then I'll plug their business. That's kind of micro influencing. I'm not a big influencer. I don't have huge numbers. Uh, another thing that I want to remind you guys, you don't need huge numbers. Um, forget about millions. Forget about 500,000 followers. It doesn't matter. Just get you a loyal following of a thousand people, 500 people. If they're loyal, if they, if they just love what you're doing, you know, you're going to be able to sell a lot of stuff to them or get them, you know, to follow you and then and tell their friends. So don't worry about, forget about numbers and just do your thing and it will grow. You got to stay consistent. You've got to have um, valuable content. You've got to be, kind of have a personality. You've got to be likable, but um, just keep after it and quit looking at the numbers. Don't look at your numbers every day. And especially if your numbers for some weird reason go down, 
it, it, they fluctuate all the time and there's no rhyme or reason. You know, it's not like people are unliking you. It's sometimes it's, it's, you know, Facebook or Instagram itself. So don't worry about that. So micro influencer, um, is one, another way that I make money. T-shirt sales. Um, I've created a lot of t-shirt designs over the years. A lot of times I'll just upload the designs to a print on demand website and then when people and then i'll go back to my website and promote the t-shirt when people click on it it throws them to like a website like shopify you can open up a shopify store that has t-shirts on it and then those t-shirts are actually printed by another website called printful and so they do the entire process of taking the order printing the t-shirt mailing it doing the returns and then they just send you a check um, for your profit so but then i've also uh, me and a buddy of mine have bought silk screening equipment. We actually do silk screen our own t-shirts. We make more money because we can get the cost down and we sell those here locally or we will mail those and again we make more money. So t-shirt sales, um, flipping, uh, I, if you've done anything online, if you've even tried, most of you have tried flipping, that's no more than like taking my Fender Strat or that, that, that cooler right there. Um, bought that on Etsy. I'm sure the people that bought that, they just flipped it. So what they did was they went to an estate sale probably. They saw that cooler. They cleaned it up. They put it on Etsy. They advertised it. I was shopping at, I wasn't even looking for a cooler. I was just going through Etsy. I think I was looking for maybe some of these cool signs and these bottle cap signs. And I saw that cooler and, uh, oh, and if you guys are listening to this podcast, I'm in my studio and I've got all these things behind me that I'm pointing at. So I apologize for that. Uh, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. But anyway, um, you can take stuff around your house, just stuff that you, if you haven't used it in a year or two, go ahead and throw it on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Craigslist. Now there's even a whole bunch of more apps that you can just upload, your, take a picture of your stuff and you can sell it. So flipping stuff, a lot of people make a lot of money flipping stuff. You can go to places like Ross, and um, I never can remember all the names of them, but the discount clothing places, not only, so, so they have clothes that are usually on discount, but they also have sales racks. So some of those clothes get down to like three or $4. Well, if you buy a, a, a polo shirt for $3, man, you can pretty much sell that for 12 bucks online. And so that's flipping. So a lot of people are making money at flipping. Um, business listings. I've started a business directory online. Basically, you just get people to sign up with their uh, their business. It's a monthly subscription. They've got a whole bunch of different packages they can do, and it just basically puts them in my directory, and I advertise them. And uh, so, business listings is another way. Photography. Um, never was a huge, huge fan of photography, but you know, building your own websites and doing your own, being your own media company. Kind of like I said, as a, um, a TV station, you've got to go out and take pictures of events and, and video events. And so, I, so I've gotten better with taking pictures. I bought some really expensive Canon cameras and um, got invited to take pictures at concerts, you know, Beach Boys and Sticks and REO Speedwagon. And, and so, so you get better the more you do it. And then I went on a two-year stint where I got up every morning. I, I work out every morning. That'll be another reminder, you guys got to stay in shape. Um, I'm 57. So, you know, you got to physically stay active. Anyway, um, I do 90 minutes of some type of exercise every morning. So for two years, I'd go out on the trail. And um, while I was working out, I'd wait for the sun to come up and I would take sunrise pictures. And so I got two years worth of sunrise pictures. Um, I would upload those pictures to the Enid Buzz Facebook page. Uh, eventually, um, people started asking to buy them, so I sell my photography. They've been used for in publications, for calendars, on websites, um, and then people invite me to come take pictures at events. Not, I'm not like a professional photographer. I'm not a wedding photographer. I'm not a portrait photographer. I'm a backyard photographer. If they just need somebody to come take like party pics or events of or pictures of a building or things like that, you know, so maybe an outdoor event where it's, you know, you're just taking random pictures at like a first Friday downtown. Um, I've gotten paid to do a lot of things like that. So I've made money with photography. So that's another thing. Um, and then, wow, then the iPhone came out. Now I take probably more pictures with my iPhone than I do my Canon. And actually the pictures are better. The lighting is better. 
it's just crazy what you can do with an iPhone these days and photography. So uh, photography is another way I've made money. Being an extra in movies, um, we had Jake Gyllenhaal come to town and they were uh, filming the movie Wildlife. And so I thought it'd be cool to document. Me and my friends were thinking about doing, doing some movies just for fun. And I thought it'd be cool to get into a real movie and kind of see what cameras they used, how they did the sound and the lighting. I didn't really plan on anything big and just so happens the scene that I got picked to be in as an extra was a shot with, you know, well, several shots with Jake Gyllenhaal and um, Ed Oxenbold. And so, so anyway, if you see that movie, I'm in that movie. And then, then you kind of get the bug and you're like, hey, that was kind of cool. And you, and you get paid, not a whole lot of money. I might have got paid like $67 a day or something for that. So then I did another movie with Bo Derek. Um, and then I had a speaking part in a Western that they filmed here. And then I did another movie that actually at this point hasn't come out yet called Starbright. I think it's going to come out later uh, in 2020 if this whole, when this whole uh, virus thing ends up. So anyway, being an extra in movies, but the thing about that is you got to be in an area that films a lot of movies. Oklahoma, fortunately, gives these rebates, and so a lot of people are filming their movies in Oklahoma, which gives Oklahomans a lot of opportunity to be extra in films. And again, a lot of this stuff, I was doing, almost everything I was doing was side gigs. So when you're doing five different side gigs at the same time, you're not getting to put a whole lot of time in everything. So if you picked any one of these side gigs that I'm telling you and did it full time, now I'm talking full time, you know, when you go to a job, let's say you work at McDonald's, you know, you're there eight hours a day and you're, you're, you're working, you can't go goof off. You're, so if you take any one of these side gigs and you make it your full time business where you're doing it eight hours a day, five days a week, and if you love it so much, you're going to be doing it in the evening, on the weekends, you are going to make money at. You can't spend that much time on anything online and not eventually start making money. I promise you. So you just got to keep after it. But, you know, to make decent money, you got to do it full time. But some, like I said, some of you may just want a side gig. Maybe you're making a good, you know, $40,000 a year and you just need an extra $5,000 a year to go on vacation or to pay for something. Well, one of these side gigs could get you that extra $5,000 a year and maybe that's all you want, which is fine. So um, then you can just do it part time, a couple hours. Some of these you can automate and you almost don't even have to do anything and they just make you money. That was a cool thing about Google AdSense, where it was just an automatic paycheck every month and I wouldn't have it. Once all those websites were built because they were thin content, I wasn't updating anything. They weren't blogs. And uh, so I was making great money year after year after year until it all collapsed. Um, and then the last thing, number 22 on my list um, that I'm going to tell you, I started a greeting card company. Again, here I am a, a cartoonist. And I thought, well, let me start. So I started Chuckleberry's Paper Card Company, and I actually drew a line of, you know, 50 greeting cards, all different holidays, birthdays. I ordered quality greeting card paper. I had it cut and scored at a print shop. They would give it to me blank. I would run it through my printer here in my office, both sides, you know, the the front and the back had my logo and then you'd and then you'd flip it and print it again that had the inside saying and then I actually started ordering my own really colorful polka dotted envelopes that was kind of my signature and um, I would sell a lot of those where people would just order them and I would ship them online and then I started getting you know gift shops and boutiques ordering them and so I started selling them wholesale and uh, the weird thing about some of the side gigs I've done over the years is once they got big enough that I was going to have to hire a second person, then I would kind of quit because yeah, I, I wanted to be an indiepreneur. I didn't want to have to have an office and a warehouse and then you got one employee and then you've got employee taxes and insurance and then you got to hire a, an accountant and then you got to hire another employee and then you got to have more room and then you got, you know, and I just didn't want to get into that. So um, oh, hang on, you guys. TV just kicked on. I didn't even think about that happening. So, hey, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, that's what happens when you're doing live in your own studio. So, uh, anyway, about got to the end of it. What was I saying? Um, 
Anyway, number 12, oh, greeting card. So yeah, so um, I try to keep everything indiepreneur. Uh, had I started sooner, like, you know, had all this internet and social media been around when I was in high school, I probably would have gone for it and tried to create a really big, you know, 100,000, 200,000, million dollar company. But I enjoy uh, being able to have the freedom. I wear sneakers and shorts and t-shirts and ball caps and um, just kind of hang around my house all day long unless I have to run out and meet clients or do, you know, cover stories here in my town. Uh, when I was doing the cartoon logos, though, I never had to go anywhere except for the post office to collect checks, you know. Um, you know, so I like having these side gigs that are kind of entrepreneurial where you just kind of work for yourself and you get to, you have the freedom to stay at home. And through this whole virus thing, you know, luckily I haven't been too affected yet. I know some of my advertisers may drop off, but I'm still working. I'm probably working more now than before, whereas my kids are home because they're out of school. My wife is home because she got laid off because she's a dental hygienist. I know a lot of people that are at home not working. Um, hopefully the stimulus package is going to help people, but I didn't have to worry about that. Um, again, if, the, if my advertisers start to drop off a little bit, I'll just look at one of the other side gigs that I'm doing, or I'll pick a new one and I'll ramp that up. Maybe I'll sell more t-shirts or, you know, I'll try to figure out a way to, to plug the hole or I'll just quit spending as much money until everything, you know, comes back. And so, uh, that's one of the benefits of working for yourself. So again, this is kind of my inter introductory pilot episode. I am that buzz guy. Um, that nickname come because I started Enid Buzz. I would be out, and I tell you what, if you guys aren't doing video or Facebook Live, you are not building your brand. If people can't hear your voice and see your face, uh, you're definitely not building your brand. Once I started doing uh, more Facebook Lives on the Enid Buzz Facebook page, man, my brand blew up. And so people would see me all over town and they would stop and they'd say, hey, aren't you that Buzz guy or aren't you Enid Buzz? And, and so it kind of stuck. And so now I'm pretty much known as that buzz guy. So that's where that came from. Um, and anyway, you know, I'll have an episode where I'll basically kind of tell you. So that's another thing I could maybe teach you guys is have some episodes mixed in where I teach you guys how to build your own community. Um, if you're in a medium sized town, uh, you know, newspapers are hurting and people aren't getting their news from newspapers anymore. And if your town is big enough to support a lot of advertisers, but you don't have your own TV station, you know, it's perfect for having one of these uh, community, it's kind of like community journalism, uh, independent journalism. You're just kind of basically covering, and you know, I cover mostly entertainment, lifestyle, uh, business, things like that. I don't do in-depth undercover stories and things like that. I'm, I'm not, I didn't get a journalism degree. I, you know, I write okay, not super good, uh, as you guys will be able to tell. Whoops, dag nabbit on my, uh, on my blog. Um, yeah, and so I'm testing something out here too. That's why I just, you know, wrecked everything, especially on the video is. Um, so if you guys are going to do a podcast, uh, you know, me and my buddy have a, a lot of expensive equipment. We've got the mixer board and the, the hoity-toity microphones, but... What I thought I would try on this is I'm, I'm trying this. I'm recording straight into my iPhone using a corded set of earbuds, the Apple earbuds, because they've got the little microphone. So, so the microphone is basically poking out of my shirt. So if you're listening on the podcast, if you're looking on the video, you can see it. But if you're listening on the podcast, I'm literally just talking into the microphone on the ear pods from your iPhone. And I'm going to see how that does. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video, post it to YouTube. It'll be on my YouTube channel. Then I'm going to rip the audio out of it. That's going to be my podcast. And then I'll chop it up into little pieces and that. I'll use that on Twitter and Instagram and things like that. But so I'm trying to record my video and my podcast all at the same time. Uh, when I get done, um, you know, I'll pull the video and see what the quality is. I may have to put it into GarageBand or... Um, audacity and and you know help it a little bit but uh, hopefully not hopefully this sounds uh, good enough that uh, you guys um, 
are enjoying it. So anyway, I'm going to get off here for this uh, first inaugural pilot episode of That Buzz Guy. Thank you guys for checking in. Again, it's all about teaching you guys how to have the freedom to work for yourself. So let me know what ideas you guys have. Uh, Maybe uh, ask me some questions about something you're already doing and, and you need help with. Buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. That's my LLC. So uh, contact me there. Again, probably hit me up on Twitter. It's probably going to be the best place. Or send me an email and uh, hopefully I can help you out. So next week's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have my girls doing. Um, I've got a project going where I'm collecting... I started from zero and I'm, I'm making money certain ways where it's not costing me anything and I'm building up that amount of money and it's going to be kind of like that, that bartering thing where you take this amount of money and you buy this and then you sell that to buy that and uh, we're going to see where I can go from zero dollars to you know maybe buying a house or a car or you know something really cool. So anyway, I'll chronicle that as well. Uh, we'll talk about my t-shirt company, we'll talk about Enid Buzz, we'll talk about uh, this podcast, how I'm going to start making money with that Buzz Guy podcast. Um, you know, my buddy and I, we do the 70s Buzz podcast, so it's been going on, we're, uh, I don't know, 120 episodes into that. If you like the 70s, go find us on there and listen to that. So anyway, uh, again, there's the train. This is going to be true garage home studio recording. You're going to hear... Pl- trains, planes, and automobiles because I've got a busy street right outside my window. I'm right under the flight path of the United States Air Force training pilot base, Vance Air Force Base, and then I've got a train one block away that comes through all the time. So you guys are going to hear all kinds of background noises, but uh, hopefully that'll make it more real. And uh, anyway, uh, appreciate you guys. Please, everybody, stay healthy out there. Follow the rules. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Six feet away from everybody. Let's get through this. I don't want anybody to die. Um, I want every. I want the economy. I, the economy is going to be wrecked. I don't care what they say. The economy is going to be wrecked. But uh, hopefully, I can help you guys start these side gigs, and so we can all start generating money as quickly as possible. Keep following me. Hopefully, I can help you guys. You guys have a great evening, and uh, talk to you soon.